Some would say that De Quincey's Confessions of an English Opium Eater is the very first um, example of a genre that has come to be known as the addiction memoir. Uh, De Quincey published Confessions first in London Magazine, the magazine that Lamb made famous and that indeed made Lamb famous. De Quincey, age 36, published um, in two parts in 1821, uh, his confessions, published anonymously, I should add. Uh, only later, a year later, was the um, material published in book form. Now, the addiction memoir generally um, has two components. One, um, it is a rather hellish uh, descent into the ills of the addiction. Uh, the, the, the terrors, the destructions, um, all the awful things that one associates rightly with addiction. Um, and two, uh, the addiction memoir often features a way out, a way out of the hell of addiction. Uh, obviously recovery, how does one recover? Well, uh, we often see in more modern um, addiction memoirs, uh, the writer might have a stay in a rehab institute, or the writer might go through Alcoholics Anonymous, or the writer might find religion. Um, some 20th century examples, 20th and 21st century examples of the addiction memoir uh, would be uh, Charles, Charles Jackson's um, The Lost Weekend, uh, William Burroughs' Junkie, uh, more recently Leslie Jameson's The Recovering, and Mary Carr's Lit. Now, uh, one could make a case that the first addiction memoir was not actually De Quincey's Confessions, but rather Lamb's 1813 um, Confessions of a Drunkard, also published anonymously. Uh, what these two um, memoirs share is um, partially what makes the Romantic Age the Romantic Age, and that is a very particularized detailing of the writer's form of addiction. When Lamb in Confessions of a Drunkard talks about how uh, he can't become loquacious, witty, intelligent unless he's drinking. Uh, when he talks about how uh, sobriety actually is a form of death for him. These are very specific um, modes of addiction. Uh, same with De Quincey. Uh, there's something idiosyncratic about his forms of addiction. No one experiences opium like De Quincey experiences opium. So there's a radical subjectivity. So this is important to get, and this is important to get as a, as a feature of what is now called the Romantic Age. Um, it's not enough simply to write about the I in a general way. Uh, the feature of the romantic memoir, in particular the romantic addiction memoir, is to talk about the I in a very specific way. Now, De Quincey, in his opening remarks on um, Confessions of an English Opium Eater, says that uh, he hesitated for a long time to write this uh, particular memoir, Confession. Confession is actually an important word here, um, suggesting that he has some sort of sin to expiate. He says um, he didn't published these remarks um, for a while because the English readership does not want to see the moral ulcers and scars of the writer. And that's precisely what De Quincey does. He bears it all, not at all, but he bears most of it. And a very shocking, stunningly shocking portrait um, of his life as an addict. So that's the first part of the addiction memoir as a genre. Again, the very detailed accounting of the addiction, um, in the case of De Quincey and Lamb, not just detailed accounting, but a, but a very radically particularized detailed accounting. This is my addiction and no one else's. Now, the better addiction memoirs, I would say, and probably most would agree, are not the ones that simply show someone going deep into the hell of addiction and then climbing out um, into the heaven of recovery. Uh, obviously, Hollywood likes that form of addiction memoir, and a lot of readers like that form of addiction memoir. But I would say that, that what distinguishes the literary addiction memoir is the way that it problematizes uh, both the addict's relationship to the drug and possibly the reader's relationship to his or her experience of the drug. Um, what do I mean? 
So um, when we uh, when we begin when we read um, De Quincey's Confessions, we first and foremost hear him say, "I am not writing this out of guilt. I am not writing this out of guilt." Cleverly, he says, "If I did write it out of guilt, then th these would be the consequences." But I'm not writing out of guilt because I have nothing to be guilty for. Um, I first took the drug, he says, because I had a stomach ailment and the drug was meant to help with the pain of my stomach ailment and then I became addicted to it. So essentially, it's not my, my fault. Um, so there's a sense early on that we shouldn't feel guilty. Um, this is simply a drug that we take. Now, we have to realize that at this time in England, everybody was taking opium. Uh, babies were given opium. Sometimes animals were given opium. It was used like Advil. Um, so it's not as if De Quincey was somehow special. Um, he just took a lot of it, and he could write really well, which was also true of Coleridge, took a lot of it, and he could write really well. But the point to get in De Quincey's case is that um, I'm not guilty because I couldn't help getting addicted to it. But then there's also a sense that he does write out of guilt because throughout the confession, he's trying very hard to um, account for why he does it. Um, he's very much aware of the destructions of the drug on his own health and on his family. Um, and indeed, he concludes the memoir by describing the pains of opium. So there's a complexity here. There's a sense that I have no agency. Um, the drug has simply taken me over. I couldn't do. I could do nothing about it. But also a sense of agency. Um, I did have choices along the way. The choices that I made um, ultimately have caused great harm to me and my family. So um, a second duplicity that we see in, in De Quincey's confession. Um, he says early on in the confession that there is a moral to this tale. Um, he says, if I were writing out of guilt, I'm not. If I were writing out of guilt, it would be okay because there's a moral to the tale. Well, what is the moral? Um, it seems by the end, yes, there are many pains that come with opium. But <laughs> why do we read Confessions of an English Opium Eater? Because we're utterly enamored of, we're mesmerized by... Uh, De Quincey's baroque, bizarre, outlandish, wonderful, sublime, dizzying, abysmal opium visions. Uh, as if to say, yeah, opium can be kind of painful, but it's amazing too. Um, it's an incredible drug. So this is another ambiguity um, in seeming to condemn the drug. Uh, De Quincey writes about the, the effects of the drug. But the effects of the drug, while painful, are also extremely pleasurable. So by the time we get to the end of Confessions, we probably wonder, is he telling us not to take opium or is he suggesting how amazing opium is? Uh, so and in the case of the literary addiction memoir, usually there's a problem, problematization, uh, that's hard to say, problematization of, um, I didn't say it right that time either. Uh, <laughs> the, the writer shows the ambiguities um, often attendant upon not only, not only being an addict, um, but also representing the addiction to the public. Um, in depicting the addiction as negative, often the, the, the joie de vivre, the zest, the zeal with which the effects of the drug are described suggest that the drug, while painful, can also be pleasurable at the same time.